So you want to know why I started using Logic Pro X. I'm going to give you my five favorite features that make it interesting to use Logic and the things that I enjoy about it. I have Logic Pro X pulled up on the computer. I also have one of the features featured here on my iPad that I'm going to show you guys and a few other things. I literally wrote this thing out, so I'm going to go through that right now. What's up, everybody? This is DDS, and as I mentioned, today's video is all about Logic Pro X, giving you the five features that I like about Logic Pro X so far. Go ahead and subscribe if you're not subscribed. I'm gonna go ahead and dive into this. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the Logic Remote. If you aren't familiar with what the Logic Remote is, it is an app that you can use on your iPhone and also your iPad. I'm not sure if it works for Android yet because that's not the Apple um, ecosystem. So if you have an Apple device, you can go ahead and use it. I'm gonna pull it up on the screen where you guys could check it out. But what it is, is it enables you to record while you're you know you're basically controlling logic while you're not on the computer so for example if i don't want to be right here at my computer i can go over there as long as i'm connected on the same wi-fi and control it so if my microphone is set up on the other side of the room somewhere i can literally go over there and record and that's how i do a lot of my uh courses or some of my videos where i'm not in this setting i may be over on the other side of the room actually recording a video but i have my mic set up over there so that way i don't have to be over here i just open up the app on my ipad and just press record you can monitor to make sure that everything is recording you can monitor the levels all of that there you can even turn your effects on and off and a whole lot of stuff you can do with it even down to mixing so i'm gonna go ahead and pull it up where you guys could check it out on the ipad i love using it on my ipad strictly because it is a um larger screen than my phone so I could do a lot more with it okay so I'm showing you guys how to set up the logic pro X remote and as you saw when I opened up logic the logic remote on my iPad it just showed it was on my Wi-Fi and it found that I had logic pro X open right here on the computer and it just automatically loaded up syncs in with the computer so as you see right now I have the mixer open and you see like I have halftime my effects and all of that stuff I can turn this stuff off I can remove the plug-in I could open the plug-in I could choose a different plug-in so this really comes in handy when you want to um, mix your tracks and all of that stuff from the remote. You can control the, the song and all of that. So right now I have my loop on the wrong spot. So let me go ahead and turn the loop off, doing it all on the Logic remote. So it went there and then now the beat is playing as you see right there. You can't hear it of course, but you could look up here and see the different uh, levels and everything moving at the top under the numbers of the tracks and you can't hear the tracks because I don't have the audio set up right now you can go through and you can add effects and all of that stuff that's what I'm about to show you right now I'm going to my effects so uh, I'm not sure exactly what track I am on right now but I'm gonna play it just see what it sounds like I wish you guys cared I'm gonna turn up the audio on my monitors okay, so I actually got up so I can show you guys you know how this sounds when I do the recording of effects and everything on the iPad remote or logic remote on the iPad excuse me so right now I'm about to play the beat and then I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, show you guys the effects Okay, so I had a system overload for whatever reason, but you guys get the hint, man. This thing is dope. I use this to record my podcast and everything. The Logic Remote is definitely one of my favorite features, but now it's time to go ahead and dive into the next feature. Another one of my favorite features is capture recording. I didn't know about this until I was actually watching somebody else on YouTube talk about it. I saw them use it in a video and I started implementing it into my setup. So a capture recording is, is you know, sometimes when you're making a beat or something and your MIDI is, uh, not your MIDI, but you're not recording. So since you're not recording, you're, you're just playing. And let's say you play something that you like a lot, but for whatever reason you did not hit record and you cannot remember what you played, it happens. 
happens to me and i don't want to say all the time but it does happen i don't have my audio plugged into there because i'm talking just so you guys know but i'll turn it up on here just a little bit just so you guys can see it so i loaded up this piano don't know what i'm playing just did that but let's say i really like that and i don't remember what i did i could hit this button right here called capture recording hit that and boom it's right there everything that i play will be right there as you see it's off and everything that wasn't the purpose it was to make it on but this is a good feature because for me as somebody who likes to just play around to get ideas i don't really know music theory all the way through to just be like oh yeah i played this chord and that 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 i just know i get down and play what sounds good so this enables me to be able to pull that stuff up and then from there dropping into my track without trying to record because i've had moments like that so to get that option what you have to do is go up here i did the little right click hit a uh, customize control bar and display and then i believe it is over here transport okay right there so basically you just want to turn it click it on and then click okay and then you can save it as the default so that way it will show up every single time that you open up logic i love that that comes in handy use it regularly the next feature i want to talk about is self-explanatory really it's auto save Autosave is a big deal for me because I've had moments where, you know, sometimes the DAW may crash on you or things just may not work, stuff freeze and you have to force quit it and all of that stuff to get it back. So for me, this is a big deal. I know there are other DAWs that have this feature already. You know, some of them may save every five minutes or something like that. And I don't believe that I had to turn this on in any setting. I believe it's automatically set. There are times where you know logic may end up shutting down like i may have a full project up here and i'm right at the end of it and right when i'm about to save it it just decides it wants to close out on me and it's not saved so then i end up right back looking at my desktop like what just happened and then when i go to open it back up what happens is something will pop up and just say like do you want to open up the last save project or the auto saved project that you were working on and that has saved me the few times i've had logic crash it doesn't crash all the time but that's something that definitely helps when it comes to making these beats because you want to make sure that you have your stuff ready to go and prepared just in case anything happened you know a power outage might happen something completely out of your control but when you get your power back you'll be able to get it because sometimes man this stuff can crash and it'll make me lose my motivation <laughs> to even do that stuff so the next feature i want to talk about is live loops if you're not familiar with live loops it has been added in one of the latest updates that came out last year for logic it was a big deal when it came out and it's still a big deal right now i have a video on it i'll put it in, in the description below where you guys can go check that out because i'm not going to do a full deep dive into it right now because i don't use it the way that i used it back then so the way i use it now is i use it as a placeholder for patterns so for example you guys know that i use i use machine i'm used to the machine way of making beats and all that stuff i'm just moving this over here so i can show you guys how i use it so when i say i use this as like a pattern holder for example this i'm gonna go to my 808 i'm just gonna use that for example so for my 808 I could put this 808 over here and then that's my main 808 now if i want to make changes to this 808 but i want to keep what i had and keep it in a place where i can pull it up into my arrangement i'm going to drag it over here to make it another like pattern is what i call it but it's on a different loop i guess so i'm gonna pull it up and let's just say i want to change it to where i get rid of all of this sorry this thing is extra sensitive right now okay so Let's say I want to get rid of all of that and uh, get it to a space where it's just hitting like that. I can take this pattern and then drag it over here and apply it. And it doesn't change anything I did right there. So if I just want to change, make changes in my 808s or any instruments, I can move them over there. And that's not with these. These are the drums that I did a machine. So that's not going to change, obviously. But anything that I recorded in Logic like the piano or the pad all of that stuff i can put it over there and make another pattern of it and that's great for me for when it comes time to add variations like if i build up a key pattern or something like that i can go and take stuff out and then from there i will be able to you know keep what i originally had and just make changes easy as drag and drop it's real simple 
that's a dope feature you can record your loops like you can go through this section whatever section you have right here go through that section go through that section i did do that in one of those videos so again those are in the description you guys could just be sure to check those out please because i'm telling you those videos are dope as well and it, i dive deeper into it the next thing i want to talk about is the arranger in logic pro x the arranger for me is beautiful. It took me a minute to get used to it because I was so used to using machine and coming from FL Studio, it's kind of similar, but it's not, but this works great for me. I get questions like, yo, what if you export your drums and you have an error from machine? How do you change it? Do you go back and change it in machine or are you changing it right there in Logic? I'm changing it right here in Logic. I just make little cuts and edits right there and move the stuff over. Uh, you have your automation like you hit a on your keyboard and you can go through here and this is how I do my fade outs every time right there like that you can go through all the different stuff you have effects on there you can do the automations on there all type of stuff I don't really have effects on these right now but you can go through and do all of that and you can go to the if I go to my output one I probably have more effects yet like all these different effects I can uh, like just show you how that stuff will work so you have your pannings and all of that stuff you can go up and down all that stuff so it's real simple to do it inside of the arranger and logic which is why again i enjoy the arranger you can do mutes cuts all that stuff just move stuff out i don't know what i just did but you can do all of that stuff right there in logic and it is great the arranger is great that's my favorite one of my favorite features so the last thing i'm going to talk about this is a bonus because i know i said it's going to be five this is a bonus the fact that I can color or change the theme of Logic just blows my mind. I enjoy it. It makes it more interesting than just the plain gray that it originally came with. So for me, that is another feature I want to talk about. It doesn't come with Logic Pro X. You do have to buy it on your own. What it is, as you see right here, is LPX Colorizer, Logic Pro X Colorizer. I have a link to it in the description below where it'll say color your Logic Pro X or customize your Logic Pro X. You can go and change all of this stuff around to any color that you want, even down to having it where the mixers will match the track colors that you have up here. I have a video on that. I will put that in the description as well. So if you guys want to check that out, that is one of my favorite things about Logic Pro X because I change the colors every now and then and it just helps me stay inspired because, you know, the gray just wasn't getting it for me. So anyway, guys, I will have a lot more Logic Pro X videos coming soon. If you are interested in any specific Logic Pro X topics, drop them in the comments below. And if I know how to do it, I will definitely make a video on it. Please subscribe. I appreciate you all tuning in. Hopefully you all have a wonderful day out there. Take care. If you need help using machine, I have my video course up on teachable.com and it's entitled how I use machine. I cover everything from how I started beat to finishing the beat. The link is in the description below. So if you need help with machine, go check that out. Hopefully you enjoy the video.